Gentlemen, welcome back to the channel. We're going to go ahead and get into everything you need to know about the markets as well as AMC stock here today. So if that sounds like something you are interested in, you're interested in making some money, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel so I know exactly which one of you guys are interested in making yourself some money as well as comment down below. If you want to get involved with the conversation, give your opinion. Sometimes you just got to give an opinion when it's not asked, but this time it's asked. So please comment down below. Let's go ahead and get into it, guys. So AMC stock, you should be very encouraged. It's a Friday. It's fun Friday, fucking manipulation Fridays, right? We usually get a lot of manipulation on Fridays. Well, not as much today, at least not enough manipulation to cause AMC stock to be in the red at the time of recording this video. At least the stock is up 2.79%. Could be different by the actual close the last couple of minutes can get pretty volatile then you could see some downside who knows i'm not a fortune teller i don't have a crystal ball but right now amc stock is green and you're right at about 13 dollars per share 13 dollars per share is a very important level so even in after hours trading today you want to watch 13 dollars per share if we close above that that is a very great sign and next week should be very good as well if we don't well that doesn't mean next week's going to be bad it just means well we're not going to have such a strong start potentially next week and what I mean by this is why is it so important? 10,769 calls are held at the $13 strike. If you get a close above 13, it's pretty simple. Next week, you're going to have to see the mark makers really obliging for all of these contracts that are in the money. Some of that happens on Friday, sure. Some of it takes two days. As you know, T plus two, it doesn't just stop on Friday. That means on Monday and Tuesday, you're seeing positions for Friday that are finally being either de-hedged for, hedged for, or just outright shares being sent to the rightful owners. So that's why the $13 call could be so important, and you definitely want to watch that. AMC stock is at $12.89. You're up $0.34 cents on the day. Big whoop. I get it. We've fallen a lot. But this could be the start of something much bigger, start of something much greater. At the $13 put as well, you have 9,466 puts. So if we close above $13 per share, these almost 10,000 puts are going to expire out of the money as well. Now, why this could be big for Friday as well? Well, that's a lot of wells. But it's about 20,000 total options that would either have to be hedged for or de-hedged for. Either way you look at it, 20,000 bullish options. This is 2 million shares equivalent of AMC. If you take a look at AMC on the day, well, you've traded about 17 million shares and the volume has been elevated recently, but starting on Friday, that's going to be about 2 million shares that need to be de-hedged for, need to be hedged for. That is a very big deal potentially. Now, there is some bad things happening out there in the markets that I think you should be well aware about before we get into the data behind AMC stock. Keep in mind, AMC is still on the threshold securities list, so we have millions of shares every single day that need to be closed out of. They're not really being closed out of anytime soon. Nobody has a, a, a real urge to close out of them, but still, they do need to be closed out. So what we've seen today, guys, you need to prepare for this right now. You, you need to be actively preparing for a recession. This is not a, a message to you for stocks. It's not sell, to saying to sell out of stocks, but if you just went into a new job, within the last two years. If you are not in a secure financial situation, this is your time to get in a secure financial situation. Do what you have to do to learn a skill, to grow your income, to put yourself in a better place now. The last place that you want to try to do any of this is during the height of a recession. Now, I don't know if it's going to be bad. I mean, I don't know. I don't have a crystal ball. But what I can tell you is we are heading into a recession. Non-farm payrolls came in strong today. Doesn't matter. No, because they get revised month after month after month. There's three revisions. And it, by three months from now, we're going to look at this payroll report. and We're going to say, wow, ugh, this was uh, pretty bad, but it looked pretty good at first, right? The revisions have been huge over the last 12 months or so. But the biggest thing to really know is the unemployment rate. So the unemployment rate just broke out of a one year uh, high. The one year high was previously 3.7%. You're at 3.8%. And when these things tend to, you know, start increasing, they tend to increase quite a bit. So the next report's going to be very important. 
But what I've personally noticed is the economy is slowing down. I live in Michigan. I know a lot of people that work in restaurants specifically. I think that's a pretty good gauge of the economy because if you're not in a good financial position, you're probably not going out to a restaurant. And if you are, you're not going out to one as much because especially, I mean, look at the prices of, of restaurants. You, you have to have quite a bit of money to go to a restaurant, in, including like a 20% tip. I mean, two people, that's 50 bucks easily. That's not necessarily a small amount of money if, if you're not in a good financial position. So the unemployment rate came in at 3.8%. This is now the highest you have seen since the beginning of 2019. This is a problem. And once it starts, it usually just gets worse quickly. And you guys can kind of see the trend of, of how these things go. On the 25-year basis, it goes pretty quickly once you start to get about 4%, right? Give or take about right here. Uh, and, and, and we're still at like record unemployment rates. And, and, and this is kind of what is scary about the next data point that I'm going to show you. The next data point that I'm going to show you is we are going to look at the personal savings rate. I believe I covered in that in the last video, but it's this. Check this out. So these are delinquency rates from 2006 through 2023. Consumer loans at 5.4%. During the great financial crisis, this was at a 10.1% delinquency rate. So not nearly as bad as, as what we've seen then. Take a look at auto loans. 3.6% delinquency rate. In 2021, you were at 2% delinquency rate. During the height of the financial crisis in 09, you hit a high of 4.4% delinquency rates. So you're getting pretty close to the same delinquency rates as you've seen in 09. And the unemployment rate is less than 4%. During this same period of of, of time in the beginning to mid 09 take a look back at this chart while the unemployment rate was north of eight percent double where it is now so just on this kind of comparing apples to apples here the auto delinquency rate if unemployment were to hit eight percent could hit over seven percent way higher than what you've seen in 09. Now, I don't think unemployment will hit 8%. If it did, that's just showing you kind of the bad position people are in right now. Not great. This is the highest auto delinquency rate since the end of 2010. Not good. If you look at credit cards, credit card... <sighs> You got to kind of take this one with a grain of salt. I, I don't think it's as important as auto loans because auto loans back something, right? You're taking out a loan for a vehicle. Uh, a lot of the time you need that vehicle. Like you need to drive to work. You need it for your kids to take them to school. Credit cards, they kind of give credit cards to everyone. So if, if you're just, you know, <laughs> I, I'm not going to elaborate on that too much, but I think you guys get where I was going with that. They give it to Joe Schmo, anyone. So I don't think that matters as much. The credit card delinquency rate is at 3.8%. Almost the same as auto loans. That is bad. That is really bad. It hit a high of 7% back in 09. Not great. Not great at all. But specifically auto loans has me quite concerned. Uh, just comparing what we're seeing now to the great financial crisis. Now, the personal savings rate. This is something that I highlighted in the last video. Again, I believe I did. If not, we'll highlight it again because not all of you guys watch every single video. But I think this one is very important. If you look at the personal savings rate, that is currently at 3.5%. I mean, you haven't been this low in a in a while back here during kind of the run-up of 2022 in the markets um and then the subsequent crash in september october uh that was around three percent personal savings rates but people are not saving money they're not in a position to save money even back here during the great financial crisis 
you were saving three to um eight percent now you can make the argument that during a recession obviously people want to save more money but the question is today is do people want to save more money or can they save more money has the cost of living been so high that people have not been able to save money that's the question you should ask yourself back in 0809 yeah people saved more money because it was a recession but the cost of living was a lot lower on an inflation adjusted basis you have to make a lot more money today just to equal the same amount of spending power you had in 08 so are people opting to spend more or not or to save less or are people not able to save more I would argue people are not able to save more given where things are at right now. If you're looking at, I mean, rent here in Michigan is um, anywhere from, I mean, 1000 to 1500 your auto payment, including insurance, is going to be six to 800 Just call it the low end. 600 plus $1,000, you are at $1,600. Then you factor in energy, you factor in water, you factor in internet, add another 300 onto that, or just call it 400, even 2,000. That's 2,000. If you make, what, $20 an hour and work 40 hours a week, which is a pretty good wage in Michigan, you have like $300 left over, not including gas, not including food. I don't think people can save is the problem let me know down below in the comment section are you able to save money do you save money or is like all of what you make being eaten away are you not able to, to save this is the problem that I have right now and this is why I think this could uh, I don't know how deep it, it'll be as far as a recession but I think it could happen quickly because once you get to that tipping point of delinquencies you start to really feed into everything else when you cannot make your credit card payment, you can no longer spend on your credit card. That brings down spending on a massive level. That's not to even mention student loan repayments kick in October 1st. If you guys have student loans through the government, you want to look into the SAVE program. If you make less than $15 an hour, you don't have to make a payment. You can reduce your payment by up to 50%, and you don't have to make your first payment until October of 2024. I highly recommend all of you guys do that as well. Now, for those of you guys that are able to save some money, I don't care if it's $50, $100, $200 a month, does not matter. Right now is not the time to be buying in your broad markets. Now, specific trades like AMC, maybe yeah, it's a good time to buy. The stock's down 80 almost 80% in, in the last couple of weeks. Looks like a pretty good time to buy. But if you're a savvy investor and you want to make a lot of money, you want to get rich, right? That's the obvious goal from everyone, for everyone that is watching this video. A lot of America do, doesn't care or they don't want to focus on these things, right? If you're watching this video, you obviously care about your family's financial success. And you probably want to free up your time and you're probably trying to buy your freedom. I get it. I'm right there. So this is the time to save as much money as possible so you can be in the best position possible. Recessions have made more millionaires than lottery winners. By far. By far. So you want to be in the best position possible to capitalize on the upcoming economic pain that we are going to see here in the economy. Now, with that being said, let's get into everything you need to know with AMC stock here on the day. Again, I don't want this to be a discouraging video not to buy AMC. That's quite the opposite of what this video is for. This is actually a good time, in my opinion, to buy AMC stock considering the stock's down 80%. Pretty simple. Now, again, not too much has changed from the last video as far as AMC and the actual technicals. You want to watch that $12 level. That looks like a solid level of support. $12.15 per share is kind of that level in which we bottomed out yesterday. Uh, or or uh, 
really that was like today uh today and in, in the beginning of the trading day geez i didn't even realize that that's the level you want to watch on the upside that eight day moving average looks as a level of of resistance around 13 dollars 32 cents per share the actual cost of borrow fees are likely much much higher than this but the biggest thing that is really wrong here is the short interest the short interest last we knew on august 15th was 29 and a quarter percent i know i say this in every video and i know you guys are probably sick of it but i think it's important to realize because August 15th, AMC stock, scroll that out a little bit, was uh, $33.53 on the high end and $29.12 on the low end. AMC stock today, less than $13 per share. <laughs> the short interest is not what Ortex estimates at 11.8%. It's simply the math does not math. It, does not, it doesn't make sense. It's not logical. So, the real short interest is probably 45 to 55%. If you take a look at the shares out on loan, that's at 55.47 million. You have roughly 59 million shares outstanding. That is almost a short interest of 50%. What we've seen is usually a spread of about 5 to 7%. So short interest logically could be in the low 40s, if not around 45. That's what I would put a solid estimate on. Um, but anywhere in that range, really from 40 to 55% would, would be what I would expect. Now, that puts AMC in a very different scenario of where it's at right now as far as a potential short squeeze trade. Because once you're 40, 50% short interest, you're egregiously short. As S3 Partner says on that Netflix documentary, um, um, I'm sure you guys have watched it on, on GameStop, GameStock, Eat, Eat the Rich, I think it's what it's called. I recommend you guys watch it if you have not done so already. But S3 Partners, they even say, you know, 10% short interest, that's okay. That's kind of common. 20% short interest, you start to get high. Anything over 30% and you start to really peak some heads, okay? Yeah, 40, 50%, you really start to get some attention. And I think that is where we are going to be at with AMC stock. Now, AMC's flow is a lot smaller now. So AMC's rally in dollars can be much larger. Instead of AMC rallying from $4 to 40, a 10X, well, AMC stock could rally from 13 to 130 and be the same kind of comparable right same comparable percentage that would be a thousand x from here and i do think a rally to a larger degree is overdue let's be honest with amc i don't think the stock should have fallen 80 percent but i do think at any point now amc stock amc probably did already raise capital so once they come out with that news that's probably going to be a very bullish event for amc stock and the stock should start to react very positively now at the same time as a potential rally we're gonna have a lot of ftds coming due today on september 1st you see about 7.2 million ftds that come due on monday you're gonna have 7.7 .7 million ftds that come due and then you're in the range of about seven to four and a half million ftds all the way until a closeout date t plus the 35 date of uh september 18th so a lot of uh ftds that come due every single day and again the option activity uh will be there and and quite strong over the next uh couple of weeks as well guys so uh there is that again i think it's a great time to be buying amc i th actually think it's a great time to buy some longer dated options as well considering again that move that you could see 10 to 50 would be equivalent of you know uh what amc at five dollars going to 25 which is things that we have seen in the past your risk to reward looks really good if you're on some longer dated options if you guys want to come trade with me live in real time get access to all of my trades every time i make a trade link down below in the description of this video that is going to do it for this one my name is the creative investor you guys have a great rest of your day and i will see you in the next one